I warned you a long time ago, Elizabeth, not to name this ministry after a man or a woman. Even before there was a ministry, I put it in your spirit. For none of this has been done by your hands. None of this has come forth from your mouth. It is from the mouth of Yahweh that has given birth. It is from the mouth of Yahushua, your Mashiach, that has been given birth. It is from the mouth of the Rekakadash Yerimayah that has been given birth. If it had only been by your hands, it would have failed long ago. It is by the Shekinah glories, wind that blows across this earth, the holy wind of revival. It is not by your breath, or it would have failed. Second Chronicles 36.16 But they mocked the messengers of Yah, and despised his words, and scoffed at his prophets, until the wrath of Yahweh rose against his people, until there was no remedy. Beware of touching Yah's true prophets and doing them harm. This re-uploaded video that you are about to see is close to 10 years old. And the video quality does not compare to the videos that A Mighty Wit Ministry is producing now. However, this video is so important and so anointed that it still is a must-see video that we do not want to withhold from the people as it shows how long ago, and the prophetic word actually being from 1998, Apostle Prophet Elisheva Eliyahu received the revelation from Yahweh and Yahushua HaMashiach, whom some call Jesus Christ, straight from heaven about the coming zombie plague and what Yahweh and Yahushua tell their people what they must know and must do when that time comes. As these times are now so near with all that is going on in the world and how Satan seeks to release this plague in one way or the other upon the people to mock and counterfeit the rising of the saints, it is of such importance that this video is presented again right now to you, the people. This ministry has been 26 years online and we are celebrating. And this important prophecy video is another testimony of how long we have been leading millions of souls to Yahushua HaMashiach for salvation. Thank you for watching this video. about the rising of the dead. Tell me when you're ready. All right, we're ready. You can start. Yahushua HaMashiach is fed up. A prophecy was given to me on August 7th, 1998. It is a warning about the counterfeit of the rising of the dead that shall happen in the Great Tribulation when the two witnesses are killed. When they come back to life again, also the dead in Christ rise first. That is the two witnesses and that will be all those who were martyred at that time. And then we which are alive will be caught up to meet Yahushua in the air. That is all those who are walking holy at that time. And especially the Revelation 7 bride. You mocked this long enough. Tried to explain. And she got part of it right. It is a demon that will enter in. And as in the days of Noah, so it shall be again. But this time it shall even be more different. Or the demon shall come from the bottomless pit. Prophecy 21. Are you ready for a shock? Gabriel has already blown his horn. And before I continue, I want to repent to Yahushua openly. There's been a few prophecies where I have refused to release it, saying I will test the spirit that speaks. Please give me proof that you are really speaking this to me. This was the first time I'd ever done it. I'd been having zombie dreams. I ignored them. My young son was having zombie dreams. I ignored him. And to get my attention, the next day, Yahushua gave me this prophecy. But I still wouldn't release it. And I said, I'm testing the spirit that speaks. People will laugh and they will mock me for this. I don't believe in zombies. For that is the only word that I can describe a zombie as somebody who's walking dead. And Yahushua, who I was calling Jesus at the time, after all, it was 1998, said to me, I will give you three witnesses for an amount of two or three witnesses established. Go into your email, choose, and I will show you who to choose, three names. So actually, I didn't choose. He'd already chosen. He just showed me. 
And he said, choose this one, this one, this one. And they were men that I had never, I did not know. They had written me and told me what a blessing this ministry was. That's as much as I knew. He said, write them back. Ask for a phone number. Say that God had chosen them to listen to a prophecy that I refused to release unless I received confirmation. So therefore I obeyed. And I still remember how frightened and embarrassed I was that day, how I tried to make idle chit-chat. And finally I took a deep breath, and I started reading the prophecy that I am going to read now. And as Yah is my witness, this prophecy never would have been released if it hadn't been for these three men that, sad to say, I no longer even know their names, but Yah does. And all of them said, this is God speaking. He has given a warning. And I do not claim to understand everything that is ever given to me in a prophecy, for I am only his mouthpiece. I am not God. I only know the words he puts in my mouth. I write down or I speak. I learn right along with everybody else. But I do know that people who pick apart these prophecies with their feeble brains, they're educated fools, they think they can figure this out with their brain. When it's the Holy Spirit that gives interpretation to any word that is spoken. So now, I am going to read Prophecy 21 under a new anointing, because I'm angry. I'm angry because God's word is being mocked. And Yahushua is more angry than ever. For he doesn't do anything without revealing his secrets to the prophets. Always a prophet is told what will happen before judgment comes. And the Bible says a true prophet is a friend of Yah. And I count it a privilege that I am persecuted for Yahushua's namesake. And a prophecy given to me in 1998. I have been bashed and trashed and smashed. But you know what? They're not my words. It's not my revelations. And you enemies, should you live long enough, after what you've all done, you shall be there. You shall see this. In the name of Yushua HaMashiach, I decree it, because it's his words. Are you ready for a shock? Gabriel has blown his horn. Daniel 12, 1. At that time shall Michael stand up. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. That's all this ministry is about, is reaching the souls for Yahushua's namesake. So those of you who mock and scoff, just know this. These are not my words. They were given August 7th, 1998. Shout it from the internet. Shout it from the housetops. Proclaim it in the streets and churches, and radio, and television. And now I'm going to say YouTube. Yahushua HaMashiach is on the way. Gabriel has blown his trumpet. The sound waves have been blocked with the raging battle that is going on in the heavenlies now. Michael and Satan and the angelic host fight. Good against evil, but good always triumphs. There are those that have heard the chauffeur horn and those that have not. Yet I tell you, I have given the warning to those that have heard the horn, to Gabriel's horn, has only been heard by a few thus far. It is only to prepare my bride, for her groom doth come. Do not be concerned that you have not heard the chauffeur horn of Gabriel yet, for it is yet for an appointed time. Even the sound waves can only be blocked for an appointed time. For am I not the one that knows how far heaven is from the earth? Even the calculations of this I have preordained. Quickly do what I have ordained and called you to do. Those that I have blessed financially when I come back, 
and fines you have been storing up your money for a rainy day and letting the prophets and apostles go without that are to speak forth the prophetic words around the world and tell of my coming and the need to get ready. Woe be unto those that have done this. Woe be unto those that have muzzled or tried to muzzle or discourage or hindered my apostles and prophets in speaking forth. Woe be unto those that have mocked and abused my apostles and prophets for speaking this forth. You have been warned. Now tell others. I told my handmaiden, Elizabeth Elijah, this first. And I told her to test the spirit that speaks and tell others gradually. She would have the confirmation she sought from those she knew not. But I knew they had ears to hear. This went against her doctrine and beliefs. She was taught when Gabriel sounded the trumpet, then you which are living will be caught up to meet me in the air. This is true. But what you don't know is revelations I now reveal through this handmaiden. It will go against your religion, yes, and your doctrines, but my words are faithful and true. There is a time lapse between these events. First Gabriel sounds a chauffeur, then a great war in the heavenlies that this earth is already seeing, the lightning and hearing the roar of my thunder. This earth is already feeling the cataclysmic repercussions like a woman given birth. The heavens are given birth to the son of Yahweh, is coming again. The heavens convulse as a woman given birth. The earth shall see and feel these contractions just as a woman given birth. There shall be hurricanes and tornadoes and volcanoes and earthquakes, and they shall become greater in proportion as my coming gets closer. You have always had these things true, but now you will see a change in the atmosphere, for I alone am Almighty God Yahweh. And I will prove you cannot trust the calendar as to what season will appear. Take note of the planets as I shift what you have believed and show what you have not yet seen. Take note of the sun and the moon and the stars. For again, I have surprises in store for this earth. I will prove I alone am almighty Yahweh. I will provide I shall no longer be mocked. That which the heathen said is impossible. I will show with Almighty Yahweh all things are possible. The heathen's God shall crumble to debris. The earth will open up and swallow Buddha. I will show what puny gods the heathens have put their trust in. I shall have no other gods before me. Those worshiping up die with their gods unless they repent today. Tomorrow may be too late. You have been warned. Anything you put before I, Yahweh, and Yahushua HaMashiach is a God, be it a person, a place, or a thing. Anything you love more than me, I will remove. Nahum 1 plainly states, I am a jealous God. You shall see me fight and destroy my enemies. I will separate those that belong to me in their mind, body, spirits, and souls. I know who truly worships Yahushua and truly has the Ruach HaKodesh Holy Spirit to prove it resides in the earthly vessels. I am not deceived by repetitious words or actions or a religion. I have been mocked, and all that is holy has been mocked, and my name is damned, cursed, continually on your airwaves, in songs, on television, and in homes, even where my children dwell, in a country that is set apart for my glory, a tiny infant, and yet so bold and brass, as to say to the Creator, in God we trust, and yet mock me by not allowing my Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit, to be in their schools, courts, or government. I will show the Supreme Court who alone is supreme. I will show America what happens to a baby that says, Go away! I don't need this Father Yahweh anymore. I will show America and use her for an example, for I have saved my worst for last. Your punishment is being stored up. The eagle will devour the country it was to protect. Oh, oh, but I can hear my babies, my true babies, my children, both babe and mature, both who eat the meat and still suckle at the milk of my breast. And they say, not me, surely not me. I live in America. What will become of me? Tears stream from some of your eyes in fear. Others blink away the tears. Here is what I say to those who have my Ruach HaKodesh and put me first and are not ashamed of the name of Yahushua. 
are being called born again. The Ruach HaKodesh filled Christians. Listen closely, and those that know my voice will feel a peace that passes all understanding. And know that it is I, your master, Abba Yahweh and Yeshua HaMashiach, speaking forth out of this handmaiden to this world. Here is what your Savior, Yahushua, speaks to his children. Filled with my Ruach HaKodesh. Listen closely, and tell all who will listen. As in the days of Moses, so it shall be again. I will separate the Israelites and the Egyptians. My blessings and my curses. Blessings to those that obey me. Curses to those that disobey me. Did I not provide a place for them when the evil Pharaoh made it impossible to live there in the heathen land? Is this not also happening now in America? Do you not also see the evil Pharaohs arising in the form of government, taking away your Christian freedoms, passing laws that says you cannot speak against that which I call an abomination, forcing you to pay for these abominations with tax money? I did not decree for you to pay. Lifestyles, I have stated plainly in my word, are an abomination unto I, Yahweh. You're living in a country in America where my name is constantly mocked and cursed. The damnation is only falling back upon the ones damning my name for profit. I will not forgive you for this, you actors who do not shed tears of remorse and confess before the people that you have sinned. Did I not provide a safe place for Lot who fled? Only Lot's wife who looked back was destroyed. For she wanted the lifestyle she was fleeing, so I gave her the same reward. Destruction! Did I not provide a safe place for Noah? Why would I not provide a safe place for my children who are filled with my Ruach HaKodesh? Why would you doubt my love when they did not? Oh, how you grieve me when you do this. Am I not able to take care of all those on this earth that belong to me? Am I not able to? Stop doubting me. In the times of Moses, did I not even force the heathen to give up their silver and gold so that those that were holy did not leave empty-handed and poor? The wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. Gabriel has found the chauffeur horn. The sound waves have been blocked thus far because of the raging battle in the heavenlies. But oh, so short of a time. And the one that you wait for will appear for his bride. Will you be ready? Be forth the secrets I tell you now in boldness. For daring to speak what I have not spoken forth from any other prophet thus far. My daughter, Elizabeth, the Elijah, will be persecuted for speaking it forth and mocked even by her own peers. Great will be their wrath for doing so, and great will be her reward for speaking what she no longer can keep silent. In the time of Moses did I not provide for the children of Israel, and yet the children of Israel, they behave ungratefully. Yet all my children at one time or another behave in the same manner. How many of you take for granted your blessings I give daily? But just as you forgive your children for not thanking you each day, for caring for them, so I forgive you for forgetting also. In the time of Moses, did I, pro did I not provide water for their thirst from a rock, a hard, dry rock? Yet it flowed forth my living waters, which sustained them. My children were thirsty, so I gave them water from a rock. And I can do it again, and I will. I am no respecter of persons. Only believe and believe I will raise up, and I have raised up, apostles and prophets who will do these things. And more, I'll do it again. Those who do not receive my living water will thirst, will die, and go to hell. For my glory alone, I will bring forth living waters from rocks. Did I let my children go hungry in the desert? Do you understand how many I had to feed? Did I have a problem? No. Without firing an arrow, without even searching for the birds, I had the birds 
sacrifice their lives so my children could have meat when they tired of the manna, the angel's bread from heaven. I fed them food from heaven, which they complained and grew tired of, and so I shall feed them again. Then when they complained because they tired of the food from heaven, then I gave them the meat of this earth, which they gorged on, and thousands died. I was angry for their ungratefulness, so beware, for again... I am a God that does not change. Now you have been taught this day. I gave Moses and my children the passage across the Red Sea when their backs were up for them and behind them, and so I shall do it again. Just believe me. I have prepared a place for my children. I have not revealed this place to even the apostles and the prophets yet, for the time is not right for them to cause my children to flee. You can't go before the cloud of glory. And you can't go behind it. You must stay right under it and move when it moves and stay when it stays. I shall give you a cloud of glory again to follow and a pillar of fire to light your way at night. Don't worry about the electric companies. If I need to, I will send the angels to guide you. I will still have a people. I will still protect that which is mine. Yes, some of you will willingly give your lives to me but I will only give you your life back. Some will awaken in heaven knowing this blood only raised up more Stevens. For remember, Shaul, Paul, held the coat of Stephen when Stephen was stoned, and Shaul became Paul. This martyr Stephen saw me, and heaven opened up, and my glory radiated his face. So think not the same kind of martyrs raising up that have already given their lives did not also see the same. Some of my apostles and prophets and children will be killed and yet live again. And the devil can't stop it, nor can mankind. I will show forth more miracles in this end time. Just believe. That's all I ask you to do is just believe. I will show forth more miracles in these end times than all the Bible put together. Will you be ready? Will you be on the side that denies me or confesses me? as Lord and Savior. Sadly to say, even my own, such as Peter, who walked on the water when it came to fearing for his life, rejected and denied me. Yahushua HaMashiach, so it shall be and already has been again. Be grateful to me now for what you have, or I will come and take even that away. So I shall do all of these things again in your lifetime, even if you don't hear about it. Know that it will be done. I am the same God yesterday, today, and forever. I am the Lord God, Yahweh, Yahushua, and the Ruach HaKadosh, and we do not change. Beware preferring the earth's meat over heaven's manna. I'm going to do all of this, and even more for my glory, to prove I, Almighty God Yahweh alone, has the last word. Not Satan, not the Antichrist, not the false prophet, and not the government. I will prove Yahushua HaMashiach, whom some call Jesus Christ, can take care of the sheep that belong to him. Even Moses' shoes did not wear out, so it shall be again. Take me at my word. Know that I am Almighty God, and with me all things are possible. For my children shall hear Gabriel's chauffeur horn. Some have already, only as a prelude to tell my prophets and speak it forth, to encourage others for the next time they hear it. All my two children shall hear it at the same time. Much love in Yahushua, handmaiden, child, warrior, bride, Elizabeth, Elijah, August 7th, 1998, 10 o'clock a.m. Finished at 10.13 a.m. today, um, he wants to continually mock and make people mock who are too lazy to go and read the prophecy for themselves. Oh, part two, get ready for a shock. Gabriel has blown his horn. The dead shall rise. Yerushua is furious. Abba Yahweh is furious. 
You see, people, this is real, okay? The devil even knows what to put in those zombie movies, you know, so you can make it think it will never happen. The devil speaks to these people who make these movies. These people make contracts with Satan so they can have the best-selling movies. This is real, people. And I know it seems like right now we're living in a twilight zone. Things that we had seen in science fiction movies, cloned foods, um, radiation that makes things grow. I mean, you know, I remember The Outer Limits. I remember Twilight Zone. This was stuff we used to laugh at. We're not laughing anymore. People, the truth is, what you've seen in science fiction is going to, is, and you will see, become a reality. In the Great Tribulation, which I personally am praying that I am counted worthy to escape that time as every born-again, Holy Spirit-filled child of Yusha Hamashiach should be praying and living their life holy. For the Word says, pray that you'll be counted worthy to escape it. So for you who want to live in it, be my guest. I don't. I live each and every day as if it's my last, as though, though I'm going to face my beloved Lord God Almighty, my Yoshua. And I suggest you start doing it also. There's a so-called Christian community here on YouTube. You're so lukewarm. You're the Laodicean church. You're the one that we've been sent here to wake up. So don't mock this prophecy that you don't understand. So today was the last draw. Yoshua said... The Yah's servant, 777, is supposed to do this video because, people, you're going to see this and you're going to remember that God the Father and Yeshua love you so much he sent a prophet to warn you so you will know what's going on. You don't mock a cross. How many times have you held a cross in your hands when you prayed? You know there's power in that cross where it's a symbol. Otherwise, it's nothing but a piece of metal. Can't you see when he says anoint a stick? That it's a symbol of the cross. That's anointing that breaks us free of, of, of yokes and bondages and delivers us. It's a Ruach HaKadosh, Holy Spirit. So as I read this, all you mockers and scoffers, you who didn't even bother to read Prophecy 21, for Part 2, for yourself, got news to you. When you hear this, you better hit your knees and pray. Otherwise, you'll be there, and it's going to be too late. You ready for a shock? Gabriel has blown his horn. Part 2, The Dead Shall Rise, again, August 7th, 1998. Long time ago. Here is one more revelation I have shared with this prophet I am speaking through. Get ready for a shock to your doctrinal teaching, and hear a truth most have not comprehended. I had to give this prophet writing under my anointing, dreams to confirm this, as well as speaking it and spoke it even through her young son. Yet she didn't listen, for it shook up what she had been taught as a new babe in Yahushua. Get ready for a shock to your religious training, and beware, don't mock what you don't understand. I am a God that cannot lie. This prophet is writing under my anointing. She cannot lie to you and has no reason to bring the ridicule that will be heaped upon her other than speaking forth my truth. I have just recently shown her these things in the month of July and confirmed them through others as she spoke them boldly forth and pondered and tested the spirit that spoke. Oh, I indeed say in my word, and the dead in Yahushua, Jesus Christ, shall rise first, and you which are living will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. But here is the part you have not understood. Listen closely. Satan will mock the rising of the saints when their spirit bodies come from heaven and join with the earthly bodies. They will indeed walk the earth like when I, Yahushua, was resurrected. The saints rose, did they not? Satan counterfeits everything I do, and so he shall do it again. Daniel 12, 1. And at that time shall Michael stand up the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was, since it was a nation, even at that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And many of them...
dust of the earth shall awake, some to up everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. I tell you this now. So when you see these things come to pass, you will not fear Satan's army of zombies that will be slain by the power of the cross in Yahushua HaMashiach. Remember, hit them with a board or a piece of wood that represents a cross. The dead in Yahushua, which shall walk and witness for my glory, will walk as in the times of old and testify of heaven not to take the mark of the beast. They shall prove there is a life after death, and they shall warn, do not take the mark of the beast. My saints, you will hear and see in glorified bodies that cannot be killed. Satan will say it's not only the Christians that have risen from their graves, but those that are not Christian, and he will prove it by causing great fear to come upon everyone that has not heard my words this day. They will look at his evil, flesh-eating demons that have joined with the heathen, earthly bodies in the graves, coming out of the bottomless pit to cause chaos. So this miracle will go unnoticed. But Satan's army of the dead are not really the mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers and husbands and wives of the heathen, but demons who will bite. And these demons will be transferred into the living. But again, only the heathen can be affected by this. So hit them with a piece of wood in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Rebuke them and bind them and cast the demons out. Say the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach is against you, Satan. And demons must flee from me. And they shall. The heathen dead will fall to the ground. Radiation from the UFOs did not cause this chaos. It is a plan from hell, and you have been forewarned by this prophet this day, who asked me not to let her speak this until it was my timing. It is my timing now. Now for another shocker. Are you ready? Yes, you shall be caught up to meet me in the air. Truly, you shall be enraptured with your Savior in my arms. But first I remind you, did I not walk the earth for 40 days after my resurrection in my glorified body? You are the body of Yeshua HaMashiach, and so shall you do the same again, witnessing for me and warning the heathen to not take the mark of the beast. Proven heaven is real. Yahushua HaMashiach is real. Death is not the end, but the beginning of either salvation or damnation. The age where you walk in your glorified bodies, where no bars can hold you, no need for food or water, but you can have it if you choose. Did I not eat fish? Did I not have a body where Thomas poked me in the side? So shall you also. Did I not walk through walls? The door was locked when I first went to my disciples, remember? So shall you walk through walls. Nothing will be impossible for you for 40 days. Those who don't have glorified bodies will grieve, for they will know that Yeshua spoke the truth when he said, As you have seen me go into the clouds, so shall you also. I spoke those words by my Ruach HaKodesh to my disciples. Now I am speaking them again to my disciple, Elizabeth and Elijah. Rejoice for those who belong to me. How much greater of a reward for this earth to see you in your glorified body and for the enemy to know they can't kill you ever again. The ones I weep over are portrayed in the painting and vision I've given to Elizabeth. One minute until midnight. They are the church of the pretenders. Religion will keep you from being my bride. A loving, obedient relationship with me is the only way you will partake in this blessing. Oh, the grieving and the tears and the sobs and the wails of the five virgins without oil in their lamp rush out to get with the five virgins who awaited their groom with fresh oil in their lamps. And extra, they will want what you have and not be able to buy it or receive it without giving their lives up for me. The ones not expecting me, not believing I will come rescue my bride. The ones believing my bride will have to go through the great tribulation and great wrath. Sad to say, you will have what you believe. But this does not mean you won't be saved. It only
only means I wanted to spare you, but you weren't ready. After the forty days, I will take my bride home, and we will feast at the marriage supper of the Lamb, and my glorified bride will fight the evil army of the dead while they are on the earth, for they know the power of the cross. That's why they are called my bride. That's why I am their savior. Their bridal gown is sparkling white and will not have the blood or wrath of this world on them. Only my blood washes whiter than snow. Pray for the handmaiden I've spoken this prophecy to. For the enemy will seek to shut her mouth permanently for daring to speak such boldness. Pray for Elizabeth Elijah to continue to speak forth that which the world deems impossible. You have not heard from her much, for already she has tried to silence the voice. I will continue to use to speak to my sheep and lambs, nations, rich and poor, leaders of all nations. The more they try and silence this voice, the louder I will shout to her. The greater the wrath will be for anyone, anyone that mocks what took such boldness to allow me to speak. The greater the blessing for all those that have received what has been spoken through this prophet. So it is written on August 7th, 1998 at 10 o'clock a.m. A.M. So it is spoken, so it shall come to pass. I have said these things to forewarn you, and so my children will not fear, and the enemies of the gospel of Yahushua HaMashiach will know who to fear and what to fear. Yahushua HaMashiach is a God of mercy and love and a God of war. I do not war against my children, but only my enemies who call another Lord and Master. You have been warned. I just... count that fast, maybe 14 years since this word. It was 1998. Um, forgive me, my math. I'm not in my math brain right now. Since that time, revelations have been given to me. I know there's two, uh, two brides, and yet they are all one bride, but it is Revelation 7 and Revelation 14. Read it for yourself. The Revelation 7 bride is sealed here on earth, but nothing will happen to them. When uh, two witnesses go up, they shall go up also, but they... Um, at the same time, there'll be the, the martyred also who will raise up in their bodies of incorruption and um, they shall warn not to take the mark of the beast. The entire time, Revelation 7 has been warning not to take the mark of the beast. Revelation 14, Bride is the one who sings the song of 144,000. They are the first fruits of Yeshua HaMashiach. Um, it's all one bride. I just want to... I want to make that clear. It is as um, when Elijah was taken up and Elias saw it and he had a double portion. The Revelation 7 bride will have a greater anointing um, than the Revelation 14 because they're going to need it. And all of this came not through any teaching of any man on this earth. I learned, and that's what an apostle does. I learned straight from heaven. And I learn with everybody else. It isn't that I just know these things. I, I learned through these prophecies like everyone else. So since this word was given, I wanted to explain. It doesn't mean that I understand everything that is in this word. I don't. I don't claim to. I only know as I was reading this, Yeshua told me for those who mock about anointing a stick. Um... I got news for you, you know. Uh, it's no different than believing that there can be holy water. Other, some people will, they're not going to be able to look at water and know that it's been blessed. It'll still look like water, but it's special water because it's been blessed, our food. When we ask for a blessing on our food, we don't even know what we're eating anymore, whether it's cloned, whether it's genetically altered. We, we don't have a clue what poisons are in there, but we eat that food and we believe in faith that that food is blessed because we prayed a blessing over it. Others will look at that 
same food and eat that same food, didn't pray the blessing over it, and the poisons in that food will affect their body. But we believe it doesn't. So for those who mock and scoff and laugh, hey, <laughs> all I have to say is when you see these uh, demons come from the bottomless pit and um, if you're still alive, which I really don't know because you're really ticking God off in a big way. I really don't know if you're going to live to see this or not, but in hell you'll see it for sure. But for others, just remember, you better find faith where you don't have it now, and you'll remember these words. But don't think you can even use that stick once you pray over it and anoint it, that anointing oil, um, and you see these demons come at you, um, you better have faith or it isn't going to work. Because there's no difference in holding that cross when you pray. It's just a symbol. It's a symbol of what we believe in, and that is the power of the cross. For there's no way to heaven except through the name and the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach. And that's just the way it is. I didn't write it. It's in the Bible. Yahushua paid the price. But it's not <laughs> her newest uh, thing that she's telling everybody now, oh Mary, that it doesn't matter what we do. It only matters what he did. You're a liar. You're a Jezebel. You're straight from the pit of hell. And you're no different than the spirit of Jezebel that chased Elijah of old. That's why I'm called Elijah of new. It's because I got the same stinking spirit of Jezebel chasing me. You are a liar. It does matter what we do. Joshua even said that if your hand sins, you better cut it off. He spoke it. He cursed the fig tree because it refused to produce fruit. Mary, you're a stinking liar. And you have led so many people astray, making them believe that they can sin all they want. That they're underneath grace and the law was nailed to the cross. Yes, the law was nailed to the cross, 613. And now it's too hard to keep Ten Commandments. He, Yusha said, you better be holy as, as the Heavenly Father is holy. You better be living holy. So that's what this message is all about. I just want you to know, since this prophecy was given, I've learned a lot. So if you want to fill in the empty blanks, you're going to have to read and study the words that came from heaven. Not written by any woman, that's for sure. I never will forget when I get to thinking that, um, and the devil will say, oh, that's just you, Elizabeth. And I will pray, and I will... You don't know how, how frightening it is to be a prophet. You know, the Bible says this is a... We're supposed to all be praying to be prophets, you know, out of all the gifts. Um, I tremble in fear being a prophet. To know that I will face Abba Yah and, and my Yahushua one day, and, and, um, <laughs> and to know that I, I've been his mouthpiece is a fearful thing. Fearful thing to be a true prophet. It is such a responsibility. But I'll tell you what, it, it, there's a blessing in it. As I get to the point where I will question and the devil will come at me, and for all you prophets out there, I want to encourage you. When you hear a voice say, oh, that's just you, let me tell you what God says to me. He says, oh, Elizabeth, you really think you can write that beautiful? Do you really think you're that smart? Do you really think you know the future when you see the future come to pass and then you know that I've already spoken it? Don't you see, Elizabeth? This isn't you, because you're not. I'm not that smart. I'm not an educated fool. But I do know when the voice of Yah speaks and I do recognize the anointing. And others do too. Because Yeshua said, my sheep shall know my voice and they shall come to no other shepherd. You have to ask yourself why the people on YouTube want so badly our enemies for one year without stop, brutally bashing, trashing, smashing the ministry's name and my name and anyone who belongs to a Mighty Wind ministry, any minister. And you know why they do it? You know why they take the prophecies and twist them? And um, just like him mocking the rising of the dead, and now you've heard it with your own ears. Doesn't Satan counterfeit everything Yahushua has done? And yet you let fear stop you from even listening to even seeing what the prophecy said. You laughed, you mocked. Now hit the, hit the floor and pray for forgiveness because you're going to see this. If you live that long, if you haven't ticked God off enough, you are going to see this. And you are going to remember. Now do you still want to laugh? It's your choice. It's your choice. That's all I have to say. On December 30th, 2010, no matter what the enemy say, they didn't give me my salvation, and they can't take it away. That's all. Some of the following video footage is very disturbing. Since Prophet Elisheva Eliyahu's re-reading of this prophecy 21 in 2010, 
There have been several cases in the news with footage to back it up of gruesome cannibalistic zombie attacks and people turning into zombies. Growling like animals and having superhuman strength where it takes like six men to try to contain them. Or where a gunshot doesn't even seem to phase them. These cases you are about to see were blamed on so-called bath salt drugs. But the question is, what really happened and have these individuals been experimented on to test the public's response? Nonetheless, all of this is like a warning and an example of what Satan is going to do on a large scale when those demons will come from the bottomless pit to possess people and turn them into zombies. As prophesied in Prophecy 21. With these cases that have happened, Satan is sending a message of what he is doing and planning and going to do. Just remember when all of this will happen. The difference is, you will not be able to kill them with man-made weapons such as guns and bullets. It will take the power of the cross, the name and the blood of Yahushua and the power therein, and true faith in the living Yahweh, Yahushua and the Ruach HaKodesh, the heavenly trinity, God Almighty, to be able to stand and to survive and to win and to overcome. The gruesome face-eating attack in Miami could be part of a trend, an example of, of something larger and much more dangerous. Miami police say they've seen similar cases recently of people behaving strangely and showing what appears to be superhuman strength. Over the weekend, Rudy Eugene attacked a 65-year-old homeless man, chewing off most of his face. Police say he was probably high on a drug known as bath salts. And we have to warn you now, we have new pictures in tonight. They are disturbing. Police say Eugene was naked, that he was growling like an animal. He was shot and killed by police when he refused to stop, but it took multiple shots. That's leading to the, the descriptions of what seems to be superhuman strength. Ronald Popo, a homeless man who was the victim of a gruesome face-eating attack. They also released pictures of the 65-year-old who remains in hospital following the attack on a bridge in downtown Miami, which show the extent of his injuries. In a second photo, Popo is seen walking with help from hospital staff. Police are investigating the attack, which involved 31-year-old Rudy Eugene, who was found naked and chewing on Popo's face. Eugene was shot dead by police after he failed to respond to orders to stop attacking his victim. Florida college student accused of killing a couple and then chewing on one of the victim's faces is conscious. Police say they found Haruf chewing on the face of John Stevens, who had been beaten and stabbed to death along with his wife Michelle at their home. I don't know how to do this. My son, he's um, taken off. It's seems like he's a little delusional. The 19-year-old sophomore at Florida State University allegedly stormed out of a restaurant where he was eating with his family. His mother called police to alert them. Police speculated he was under the influence of drugs, but the teen dared officers to test him for drugs, according to the Martin County Sheriff's Office, saying, trust me, you won't find any drugs. As of now, he has not reportedly tested positive for any drugs, but cops are still awaiting other tests. A man described by police in the city of Wens Howe as a drunken bus driver became enraged and dodged into traffic. Suddenly, he jumped onto the hood of a car. The woman driver panicked and got out. That's when the man knocked her to the street and began gnawing at her face. Onlookers say they tried to pull him off, but he was too crazed. Finally, police arrived and subdued the man. The woman suffered severe damage to her nose and lips. It's the latest in a rash of bizarre face-chewing events that stretched from Florida to Maryland to Canada. Just a college student tells police he killed a housemate and then ate part of the victim's heart and brain. Vic, police here in Hartford County say they have never seen a case of cannibalism, never seen a case like this, a stunning crime, and they say they have no reason to believe the suspect is lying about what he said he did. Investigators say 21-year-old college student Alexander Kinua killed his roommate, then ate his heart and parts of his brain, cutting off his head and hands and storing them inside his family's townhouse on Terrapin Terrace in Harford County. Annie, a naked man 
literally chewed off the face of another man. Police say they were forced to shoot him to death when he wouldn't stop his attack. Wednesday, a New Jersey man stabbed himself numerous times, then threw his own insides at police. And then word broke out about a brutal dismemberment in Montreal, a torso found in a suitcase and a porn star accused of cutting up his victim and then consuming parts of the human corpse. Now, this latest outbreak in Baltimore, the college student who confessed to murdering and devouring his roommate's organs. March 24, 2012, man attacks and growls at Miami police who try to help him. May the 2nd, 2012, man bites chunk out of his girlfriend's lip and ate it. May the 30th, 2012, Swedish doctor cuts wife's lips off and ate them. May the 6th, 2012, man kills wife, eats her forearm and dies. May 11th, 2012, a man pronounced dead at a crash, leaves the hospital alive. May the 12th, 2012, a dead man wakes up at a funeral that becomes a celebration. February the 17th, 2012, a zombie gran, 95-year-old Chinese woman terrifies neighbors by climbing out of her coffin six days after she died. May the 21st, 2012, Illinois, a barewood man bites woman's cheek in Westchester. May the 23rd, 2012, a man bites off a tip of his cousin's nose. May the 31st, 2012, an Oregon boy attacks and bites school bus driver multiple times in the face and arms. June the 20th, 2012, man under the influence gets naked, bites off chunk of man's arm in a Florida home in Manatee County. He was tasered four times before he was restrained by police. December the 15th, 2011, a puppy believed to have died in accident comes back to life. March the 3rd, 2011, a puppy comes back to life after euthanization in Oklahoma. April the 14th, 2012, a dead hamster of Oxfordshire comes back to life from its grave. 14 years ago, God prophesied through Prophet Elizabeth Elijah of a mighty wind ministry that zombies are coming and only a few believed. What was only science fiction and horror movies are becoming a reality. Some were mocking the warnings of God. Now we wonder, are they still mocking? Zombie spirits are demons from the pits of hell taking over human and animal bodies. People who have been taken over by these spirits are really becoming like zombies. Many become very aggressive. Most of them have a desire to murder. People with these spirits who become very aggressive are not dying easily. They have superhuman strength and somehow stay alive after being wounded very severely. Like the man who stabbed himself 50 times and he cut out parts of his intestines and threw it at the police and he still continued to live. The other naked zombie who attacked a homeless man and ate 80% of his face was shot once by a policeman and this didn't bother him at all. He growled at the police and just continued eating the other man's face and after several shots that was fired by the policeman, he eventually died. Now people blame these zombie attacks on a drug called bath salt, but this drug has been around for five years or more and never once until now did such events take place where people get superhuman strength and do not die easily and have a desire to eat flesh and like to bite the victims in their face. And all of a sudden, all over the world, we hear of people waking up from the dead. With even more bizarre news, we hear that animals are beginning to wake up from the dead. There is a case where a hamster died and his owner buried his lifeless body in the ground and the next morning this hamster came back to life and climbed out of its grave and it went back to its box. Then there are also cases of dogs dying and coming back to life. 
God said that even the animals will be a danger during this time in prophecy 47 of a mighty wind prophecies the zombie attacks we are seeing now are not people who are rising from the graves yet but this is the beginning we can see that those zombie spirits are taking over people's bodies and minds for real they have spirits of murder and cannibalism and the desire to bite and eat flesh this is not human nature and it comes straight from the pits of hell. Are you still mocking and having a good laugh? Are you prepared for what is coming? You just love to tear God's prophecies apart and tell the people the most vile lies against this ministry. And now, are you still going to mock after seeing all the shocking news reports about zombie attacks? We warned you, but you did not want to listen. Instead, you used your voodoo and you sent your spells and curses to us. But we are protected by the blood of Yahushua and these curses are powerless against us. In the name of Yahushua HaMashiach. This will come to an end because Yahweh God is not to be mocked anymore.